The Mountaineers had to wait until March for their first and only crack at the first place team in the Big 12, Baylor. 356 days. That's how long it's been since a ball bounced on the West Virginia High School hardwood. But tonight, they're back. West Virginia women's basketball has not lost a game since December. Hosting a Kansas State team tonight that hasn't played one since then. Team score with under 10 ticks to go. McNeil makes McMagic. He bakes home the triple from the logo. The junior went 6 of 6 from 3 for a career high 20 points before the break. The battle between the top two teams in the Big 12, number 3 Baylor and number 6 West Virginia, was hyped up like a heavyweight fight. It delivered. Austin Kendall, just a second appearance of the season. He floats it into the arms of Simmons. 31 yard connection. West Virginia's at the doorstep. Four plays later on fourth down. Kendall to tight end Mike O'Laughlin. Three yard touchdown. It's a 21 16 ball game. How much has the quarterback position changed since you were in the league? Uh, it's changed dramatically. I mean, it's, it's uh, number one. Uh, they allow you to do a lot more things. At large selection, Fairmont State men's basketball was at practice ahead of their opening round game in the NCAA Division II tournament. Then they got the call. The event was canceled. Early in the second, the Frogs got hops. Charles O'Bannon. Oh boy, 12 point game. Later, uh, this play actually summed up this game quite well. It was ugly. It was an offensive struggle. However, West Virginia somehow got the job done. It's not quite LeBron going back to Cleveland, but in Fairmont, it's the next best thing. Former Polar Bear standout Zion Dobbs is coming home. This is Tanner Boatwright's chosen profession. This is our airway kit. <laughs> Paramedic for the Randolph County EMS, or did it choose him? I'd been through something so traumatic and done medical aid on myself. So whenever I thought about going into EMS, you know, being able to do medical aid on somebody else, I knew that I'd have the mindset for it. Rewind to Tanner's sophomore year at Elkins High in 2011. After an all-state football season with the Tigers, he went on a fun father-son hunting trip to Tucker County's Pheasant Mountain, which turned out not to be so fun. A buddy had loaded a rifle and then just walked behind me, and while he's walking behind me, he happened to stumble, and whenever he stumbled, he just happened to pull the trigger. And whenever he pulled the trigger, it caught me in the back of the leg. Overnight, at 15 years old, Tanner became an above-the-knee amputee on his right leg. I'm a completely different person. You know, I don't know who I would have been if I had two legs. I don't know what I would be doing if I had plans to try to play college football. You know, I was a pretty good athlete, I like to say. That athleticism did not go away. He hikes, hunts, snowboards, cliff jumps. And his job involves lifting people in and out of an ambulance. The only thing that I can't do is think of something that I can't do. Or maybe I'll run like a lion or a tiger or something like that, but you can't do that either. So in my head, you know, I can do anything that anybody else could do. His headstrong and determined mindset is quite literally supported by his high-tech prosthetic leg. For the past year, Tanner has been used as a test subject by Ottobock, the company that develops the most cutting-edge prosthetics on the market. Tanner's new leg is controlled by an app on his phone called Cockpit. The leg has six different modes. Right now, he's in basic mode, but if the EMS gets a call and he has to hop in the front seat of the ambulance, he switches to driving mode, and he's off and ready to go. I've met a couple amputees on the job, and they're down in the dumps. They don't have their leg yet, and I can explain to them, you know, it does get better. If you get a prosthetic leg and you can work through things, you can function daily just like anybody else can.